Hi. So I did this lab with Elise Buckley, and we were going to use Travis because this was kind of his idea, but he was busy doing another indie lab, so we didn't get to use him. Uh, but the idea was essentially that if you were on the moon, because gravity is less, you'd be able to do some cool little water tricks, uh, especially and most interestingly, jumping out of the water like a dolphin can on Earth, which obviously is something people can't do on Earth because we're just not dolphins. Um, so that's sort of the premise of our lab. The place we got the idea was from the book What If. Uh, they have a website, and on their website they have an article about what it would be like to swim on the moon. And so there they gave some uh, hypotheses on like things that you could do on the moon. And they went through uh, some of their reasoning, and we thought it was really interesting. So the only problem was they had a lot of like hypotheses and conjecture, and they didn't really have any data to support it. So we figured that what we wanted to do was try and support their claims with data and see if what they were saying was even true, um, sort of Mythbusters style. So that's where we went with this. The hypotheses we wanted to test were whether you would be able to jump out of the water like a dolphin, most importantly. They also said that a normal swimmer on the moon, just like you or me, could jump about a meter out of the water straight up just by swimming, which was pretty interesting because that's almost your entire body. Um, and then third uh, was that on the moon, if you were wearing uh, flippers, you'd be able to do a reverse high dive. So you could get in the water, you could swim straight up, and you could get so high that you could get onto the diving platform, uh, which was super cool. So that's what we're going for. This is our, our setup. We went to the pool, and I forget which pool it was. Um, it was the Pair Lodge, and they have a wave pool, which was super annoying because it was like 45 minutes of waves and then like five minutes of not waves, so we had to wait a really long time. Uh, and two of those cycles actually went by before we got all of our data. But we waited until the waves stopped, and then one of us got in the pool, and we videotaped ourselves by leaning over the edge. We put my phone in a plastic bag and got really close to the water, which was kind of nerve-wracking for me, but the nice lifeguard wouldn't let us use the little chair that could be lowered into the water. Uh, that's for like old people, because he was kind of upset that we were like high school students in the kiddie pool trying to like take videos of things. <laughs> a little unnerving. But um, we got data. It wasn't perfect because we couldn't submerge my phone in the water because it would break it. Uh, but we got pretty close to the water. The math on this is uh, kind of interesting. There was one thing I wanted to say, but I've forgotten it, so maybe I'll, it'll come back to me. Um, we originally thought that using that classic uh, projectile equation, the x final is equal to v o t plus one half a t squared, was going to be good, and we struggled with that for so long, uh, sort of falling off the proverbial roof, as Dr. Schuster said, and then we finally realized that we were doing it wrong. We needed to think about energy, and so, we thought about energy, we said mgh is equal to one half mv squared, and we solved it for h. We got some cool stuff, and we're like, okay, that's cool. But there's also some other stuff happening. There's a buoyant force, there's a drag force, there's some other stuff going along. So we started with our energy, and we corrected for the force of drag and the buoyant force. And then we looked at it, and we said, hold on, drag force isn't really doing anything in our experiment because what drag force is, as uh, the previous presentation said, or I guess Ben and Billy switches two ago, uh, it has to do with the surface area of you going through against the water. And because we were out of the water, when our data started, our heads were poking out, the surface area was like some curves and maybe a little <laughs> So we said that that was pretty negligible um, for our experiments. And that really, the big thing that was changing this from a normal projectile was the buoyant force, because we're in water. Um, additionally, water's just kind of weird, so there was some like currents going through the pool, um, and there were like kids jumping in, so it's not perfect. Like This wasn't a perfectly still pond, uh, but we tried to get pretty close. This is the buoyant force, and then that's our final equation, this one right here, with the uh, correction for buoyant force. And you can see that it's essentially the same equation, but we changed the g term to uh, 
account for the acceleration of the buoyant force. So that's going to be the buoyant force divided by the mass, and that's the average buoyant force. And we have to do average because when we're jumping out of the water, it's not just like one volume that's submerged. The volume that's submerged is changing. So we had to account for that, which was super annoying. And then we took the average because we couldn't account for every data point that we had that. Do you have a question? Um, yeah, so in the equation where I see g minus the buoyant force average, that means the buoyant force average divided by mass? Yes, yeah, so that, that should be the buoyant acceleration. Okay. That's something we talk about later in the lab. It's just a minor typo. I like that phrase. I think you should start a band. What? The buoyant acceleration. Yeah. It's a weird term. It doesn't really roll off the trunk. Um, and then we're doing subtraction because the buoyant force is opposing gravity. It's pushing up and gravity is pushing down. And you could do a little verbal free body diagram because I didn't want to draw anything in Google Slides because that's super hard. Um, for this, I explained the procedure pretty well last time. We just jumped out of the water. Uh, we did three different things. We did a dolphin jump for the first hypothesis. We did a dolphin swim and then a dolphin with flippers. And then we did a straight jump, a straight swim, and a straight with flippers. And by jump, I mean we jumped off the bottom of the pool. Swim, we just used our feet and kicked as hard as we could. And with flippers, we did the same thing, but with flippers. Uh, and there's some weird stuff that happened that I'll talk about at the end. This is our data. Uh, I don't know why at least decided to not just take a picture. But here it is. Uh, there's some things I kind of want to point out. This is... Uh, Where's the height? Okay, yeah, here. So the troubling thing with this lab was when we took data, uh, the error was funny because of the angle we were taking data at and the pool wasn't really deep enough to use the flippers effectively. We had to like squat at the bottom of the pool to even like get our heads under the water. So we didn't have enough like room to gain speed. And for that reason and a few others, I think, uh, I don't know if you can notice, but it says that the height on the moon that we would get from the swimming without flippers is going to be higher than with flippers, which is just wrong. Like, if you think about that, that just doesn't make sense. And um, I remember what I want to talk about. The way that we got this data over here is uh, the Earth equation, and then we just scaled it for the moon. So we changed to gravity. Uh, that was just a minor detail. But this, this is like troubling to me. Uh, so yeah. Here's how we took data. This is really funny. If she put it in the right video, because at least put it in the video. This is what it looked like when we took data in the pool. The camera goes down. And then... <laughs> it was very fun. Um, but the lifeguards were mean to us, so. <laughs> Question, why did you use that pool and that um, pool that didn't have waves? Um, because this was the only pool that we could think of to use. It's kind of depressing. Um, the pool at Webster University, you need like a special membership, yeah, and I didn't want to deal with that, so we just were like, okay, what's an indoor pool that we can go to and um, do our lab? Because it was really cold. You can't swim no, this was the uh, the Fair Lodge pool. Yeah. 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 Is that like a public or closed? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, no way. We thought about it. it okay. This was the one we decided on. Doesn't anyway, um, this is what our data looked like. These were two examples. One is a dolphin jump, and one is a straight jump. And the interesting thing about the dolphin jump is um, in the dolphin jump one, <laughs> I recorded all the data from uh, bottom to top to bottom. And in the straight jump, I just went to the top because we were only worrying about max height and I did the straight ones afterwards. So that was more efficient. That's why they look different. But otherwise, they're pretty much the same. The only other thing is, with the dolphin trials, because we were kicking, our maximum velocity, or the, our initial velocity, wasn't directly as we left the pool. It was a little bit afterwards. So we had to correct for that in a little bit. And uh, after we took data and did all the analysis, um, we realized that, and so there's a minor hole in our lab there where um, we should have corrected again for the kicking force, but we didn't take data to account for that, and we didn't want to pay $14 again to go to the pool because that's kind of expensive. So we just said, oops, we'll do it next time, uh, but we're not paying to get back into the pool. So 
that's another thing. Here's our error. There are a few error things that are really important. I talked about them. The camera wasn't level with the pool, which means we had a weird angle. Additionally, we were dealing with like centimeters out of the water, like 20 centimeters, so not like two or three, but centimeters. And we were several meters away from the camera, and the camera angle was weird. So with Logger Pro, if you put the dot like a little higher, it was a huge difference. And so it was really hard to get the accurate placement of the data points. Uh, additionally, we didn't think that they would really like it if we brought too much stuff into their pool. So we didn't use a scale. We measured our heads and said, oh, our heads are the same size in every trial. So we can just do that. Uh, and so the only problem is the head like kind of turns. So there's a little error introduced in that because like this distance might be slightly different than that distance, which is the one that we used. So uh, we tried to be as careful as we could with that, but obviously uh, perfection is hard to achieve. Uh, also, the pool just wasn't deep enough. We needed a deeper pool without waves. Uh, that's it for that. That being said, we got pretty good error. The way we calculated error was um, in Logger Pro, there was a max height recorded. And using the variables we took from that, we did a calculation with our equation to say what the max height would be on Earth. And if that was pretty close, and then we scale it up to the moon, we said that the moon would be pretty close, too. So this error is our calculated values versus what we got experimentally. And the error isn't really that bad. These two are weird, and I don't know why. We got a pretty big error, but you can see that we got like a 1% error on this one. 6% error. So our equation was pretty close, even though we had some things that went kind of wrong. And that was super cool because it took a long time to get to the equation, and it was really satisfying to be like, oh, we're getting really close to the right numbers. So um, thinking of this towards the moon, the values we would get there are within like 10% of what they should be. And that allowed us to really think about the conclusions. Um, the first hypothesis, can you jump out of the water like a dolphin on the moon? Yeah, you can jump out of the water like a dolphin on the moon. And that's super cool, because dolphins are cool. And I kind of want to be a dolphin, uh, no lie. Um, can you get a meter out of the water? Yeah, you can. Um, you kind of have to if you want to jump like a dolphin. But that was straight up. And then can you do a reverse high dive? That one's a little fuzzy. There are three levels for high dive. There's the 5 meter, the 7.5 meter, and the 10 meter. You could get onto the 5 meter pretty easily. The website said a champion free swimmer with a mono fin, which is different than we had, could get onto the middle one. And that seems pretty reasonable because we were getting like pretty consistently onto the low one and we're like Elise and I aren't swimmers. Like, I swam once in the past year and it was then. So uh, <laughs> certainly not like my strong suit. Uh, but I, I think that you probably could and it's they're all reasonable and uh, the only bummer is we kind of had to say that this data and our experiments were promising so to support the hypotheses, but they weren't really conclusive because of uh, the error we had, and most notably because of that weird inconsistency with the flipper versus swimming thing. So uh, I'd like to say that these are absolute and that you could do these things, but the truth is our experiment just wasn't accurate enough to like be positive, like this isn't completely conclusive evidence. So take it as you will, obviously, people aren't gonna be swimming on the moon for a few years anyway, so we have some time to redo this. Um, in the future, we would lower our error by getting a waterproof camera and doing closer things. Uh, goggles, goggles are a huge thing for us in the future, because we didn't have those, and it made it really hard to see where you were going underwater, because it's chlorinated and it hurts your eyeballs. But yeah, that's our experiment, and that's our last. Thank you. Let's have a minute for a question. What's up? Okay, so at the beginning, did you say that if you could like stand on water in the on the moon? The fun fact thing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's really funny that you mentioned that. Uh, that was a picture at least found on the internet, and that hypothesis wasn't one that we were testing, but it's one that the What If site did, and they said that you could, and they. There is an experiment that I think the University of Miami did, 
and they were trying to find out if you could use uh, flippers to run on the surface of the moon. And what they did was they took a guy and on they water. Him. What? On water. Yeah, on, on water okay. on the moon. Right. Uh, and they took a guy and they suspended him with bungee cords over like a kiddie pool and took a video of him splashing as hard as he could in the kiddie pool. And uh, so we found a picture of that set up and like read up on that lab. And uh, so yeah, I, I think the University of Miami experiment concluded that you could. I could be getting Miami wrong. It was something that started with an M. Maybe it was in Italy. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you could. So like hypothetically, if you were swimming on the moon, since you like do that, would you like end up not being on the water? You'd be like above the water, like every stroke. Oh, like you totally up lower your drag then, right? Yeah, because like yeah. when you keep swim, most you're, of your like, body out. You could, you could. So, like,